Hello teammates and welcome to The Gold Diggers, a program where we discuss stories of leadership and motivation with sports serving as a metaphor dedicated to daily grinders, corporate athletes, and go-getters. This is Simone Haldon digging in with my co-hosts, Reddy San Agustin, Robbie Devera, and our newest member, Doc Rubina D. And we are your resident Gold Diggers. So today, in partnership with Milo, we are bringing to you the inaugural episode of our Racing a Champion series, where we will feature sports parents and former athletes and dig into their parenting journeys to learn more about how they race life champions. This is also a banner moment for us as we are also now doing this with the help of our resident developmental and behavioral pediatrician, Dr. Rubina D, who will be providing us with her professional insight on what our guests will share about their parenting experiences. But let's get to know Doc Rubina or Shobes to those who know her quite well. So Doc Shobes prides herself on being someone who strikes a healthy balance between her family and her career. She is currently a mother to three wonderful children who serve as her best source of knowledge, inspiration, and experience in dealing with her craft, which is working with children with diverse needs. She is currently practicing at the Medical City as she continues to be a staunch child advocate. So, Doc Shobes, we're very grateful to have you here to share your expertise. And of course, welcome to the show. I know. Um, thank you for having me over. You know, um, when I initially, when I first heard about this, I was like, okay, what the heck? Like, you know, like a, a shining moment for me. And then, and then I got, as I got to know you guys, it actually inspired me to, wow, th this is something I want to, you know, really get myself into, especially I'm a parent myself and as a sports fan as well. I would love my kid, you know, to, you know, somehow get like the values of being raised as a champion. So we're really looking forward to learning from you as we go through this series, Doc. And of course, now let's hear uh, from the rest of our fellow gold diggers, Relly and Robbie. What else can our teammates expect from this new series and especially for this first episode? Thanks, Sam. Hi, guys. It's another Saturday night in this new month of April. And we welcome you to our new series from the Gold Diggers called Raising a Champion. Um, to kick things off for you tonight, we have with us a couple who have been a household name in the martial arts. You know, they have represented the Philippines numerous times and have truly made us proud. I will say no more, but please stick around with us as we listen to these former elite athletes tell all their stories of family and raising their two kids. I will now pass it on to Robbie to formally introduce our special guest. Robbie, take it away. Thanks, Rails. Hey, teammates, we're excited to welcome you to our first episode of Raising a Champion series, with special thanks, of course, to Milo, and especially to our next guests. They are also fellow gold diggers for sure, and literally, as Relly has mentioned, they are also household names in sports, particularly in Taekwondo. So this evening, we're very privileged as good friends of mine, Japoy and Janice Lizardo, are on our program. So please stay tuned as we dig into their parenting journey. Let's formally welcome them on board, Sim. Thanks, guys. So today we have with us two decorated athletes who have each made their mark representing the country in Taekwondo. Janice especially made her mark bringing home a gold in the fourth World Pumse Championships in 2009. And in that same year, she also won another gold in the 25th Southeast Asian Games in Laos. This brought her recognition around the country and was awarded the PSA Athlete of the Year in 2009, which is one of the most prestigious sport-related awards in the country and is given by the Philippine Sports Writers Association. And for her last competition, which was in 2014, at the ninth World Taekwondo Pumse Championships in Mexico, she ended it with a bang and won another gold with her team. And that's just some of her achievements as an athlete. But behind all that, not a, lot, not a lot of people may know this, but she was also studying to become a registered nurse and even worked for two years, all while training and fulfilling her duties as a national athlete. Japoy, on the other hand, is widely known in the country as a local sports celebrity and has been involved in the sport for over two decades. And he's a Milo ambassador and has also brought home multiple awards from his various stints competing abroad. 
He has won two medals at the Korea Open, another two at the U.S. Open, one at the Asian Games, three at the Southeast Asian Games, and four at the Asian Championships. It's definitely not an easy feat to be a standout in one of the biggest martial arts in the world. And well, I guess success attracts success because these two found each other, are happily married, have two wonderful kids, and are giving back to their sport through their work as coaches, building champions not only on the mat, but also in life. So it's a huge honor to have you with us today. And let's all welcome Janice and Japoy Lizardo. Hi, everyone. Hi to all the viewers and to, of course to the host. Good evening. And thank you for inviting us. It's such an honor to be part of this show. And it's the first episode, so we're glad that um, you chose us to be your f- first episode. Yes. And uh, just want to say hi to all the hosts. Thank you for having us. It's a kind of uh, different experience for for us na ngayon uh, parents na rin kami. <laughs> so, yon, I hope uh, that our viewers will be able to learn from us. And of course, um, like right now, uh, we're coaching na rin. We have our own Taekwondo club, the Japo and Janice Taekwondo. So we're teaching kids. And also, um, I'm also part of uh, um, the Milo family, syempre. And if you follow my social media accounts, no, um, I've been actively uh, promoting the Milo Champion habit na malaking tulong sa ating mga kids and sa ating rin mga parents, di ba? Na isang click lang natin, makikita na natin dun yung mga exercises sa pwedeng gawin ng mga kids natin. Kaya talagang no excuse tayo sa house. Kahit nasa house lang tayo, kailangan maging active tayo. Such a pleasure to have you here and it's funny because We've all been following your journey as athletes, and now we get to to see how you guys are doing as parents now that you're raising two children. But we just want to know, I mean, what have you guys been up to lately, especially since the the, the start of the pandemic? Um, of course, that was um, March, and I just gave birth at that time. It's I gave birth February, and... It was a plan also to stay at home for three months because I had a newborn, but I didn't know it's going to be for a year already. Um, it was a little tough for the kids, lalo na kay Jace, because, um, you know, it's supposed to be his first year of school and he wasn't able to go to school, but we had to adjust and enroll him online. Um, that's how we did it. And of course, with our Taekwondo, we have to also adjust. So we did it online also. And hope, just praying that we'll, everyone's going to be healthy, na hindi magkaroon ng um, sakit. And that's basically what's going on. We're just home and um, doing things na usual namin ginagawa, but online. Kaya yun yung ginagawa namin yun. Would you mind sharing with, with us in the audience also uh, what, what teams you guys are currently handling or if you guys have, have, have any clubs that you're working with now? Yeah, I'm a coach. I'm a coach in UP Diliman, varsity team. So until now, so we still do trainings, on, online trainings with them. And Japoy? Yes, I'm currently um, coaching for DLSU and College of St. Benilde. So, yun din, um, we're teaching online kasi nga because of the, the pandemic. And um, before the, the, the lockdown, uh, we are teaching sa celebrity sports dun sa club namin. But since nangyari nga yung pandemic, uh, we're doing it online. So, yun yung uh, ginagawa namin ngayon. And of course, mag-alaga ng two kids. Parenting <laughs> at home. Yes. Yeah. So how, how's the experience like, like coaching, coaching from home, especially online? Um, you know, it's um, actually frustrating, a little frustrating because, you know, when you correct the kids, you really want to hold them and really correct their form. But we can't do it now. We just have to instruct them through uh, verbally. But... Um, Sometimes you just have to be patient because kids just don't get it right away and they really need like 
um, demonstrating talaga. That's the key when you teach um, Taekwondo. It's demonstrating. You have to show them the right form, the right um, uh, right way to kick. So it's a little hard for mm -hmm. them also um, when they not see us physically. But at the same time, they are also adjusting. So, so far, so good. And what we like about the the setup now is they're more focused because sila lang magisa and there are no other kids na ka ka, ka chit chat nila so <laughs> focus lang sila sa taekwondo na naka tutok lang sa screen so yun yung that's our observation yes and of course um, even if naka ECQ tayo naka lockdown tayo um, hindi pa rin doon nagtatapos yung sports di ba um, I'm also glad na yung uh, PTA is finding ways then on how to help the Taekwondo instructors like that together with Milo, di ba? Um, yung Milo is, um, they're developing now yung Milo, um, Milo home court and yung Milo champion habit. So the Milo home court is yung bringing the sports activities at home. So kung makikita nyo nga, yung katulad yung sinabi ko, may, may social media um, platforms, um, with the help of Milo, makita ng mga kids and parents kung paano natin dadalhin yung, yung certain sports natin at home. Like for me, like yung sa taekwondo, di ba? Um, we need rubber mats pag nagtitraining tayo, di ba? So pinakita ko doon na ano yung pwedeng alternative for the rubber mats at home. So may cardboard tayo, pwede tayong gumamit ng cardboard, itape natin sa sahig. Then we can use it as a, as a gym, di ba? And then, meron din tayo yung Milo um, champion habit na actually we also use this sa uh, aming uh, training online. So, we use it as warm-up exercises for the kids also. Kasi we want the kids na to be more focused and more active pagdating sa training proper. So, we use, we use that also. Nice to hear that, no? Japo yan, Janice. So, parang I got it. Parang ano kayo? Sumabay kayo, no? Parang mostly online na. However, ako on my side, I'm just curious because, you know, lately, and daming mga problems na, you know, concerns that go to us na mga kids, no? Parang, apparently, it's not enough that just online. I wonder what is it like with you guys kung yan. For example, at least physically kasama si na Lola, pero yung like yan, mga classmates nila, other friends that they don't see. No, walang interaction physically. What is it like? Um, for Jace, um, yun nga, kasi at this time, he's able to play na with other kids. Like at this age, I observe na um, he's able to talk, he's able to communicate. Parang when he, when we leave him with other kids, par before kasi parang he's just quiet, playing playing on his own. And at this time, yun nga, nag-start siyang maging ganon. Wala siyang kalaro. But good thing naman in school, they have this time na parang teachers are off cam and the kids are just, op um, um, their, their videos are open and their mics are open. They're, it's their chance to um, socialize. socialize with their classmates. Um, but it's a sad thing na nga lang na they don't do it physically. But at least, at least na we have that kind of parang platform na rin kahit papano. So, we really have to adjust. And with Taekwondo then Jace already joined Taekwondo and he was really madaldal in like <laughs> leading the, the group na parang, hey, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Coach, coach. He was really talkative. Like, so excited to really socialize. So, good thing naman na we, we see na Jace is really parang socialize. His socialization is good. That's great, no? So, um, I like how you mentioned that you already brought the kids into the sport because, you, you know, you guys are really identified with the sport. So, mm -hmm. maybe for the help of, uh, just to help out our audience right uh, out there who are maybe not too familiar with how, how you guys have, uh, you know, really grown to be some, some of the best Taekwondo athletes in the country. Can you bring the audience up to speed and remind them on your roots? Tell us about how you began uh, your respective sports journeys. Before kasi, my dad usually um, make sure that every summer we join any sport. And then we, we just have to look for the sport that we really wanted. And with Taekwondo naman, my cousins, 
um, invited me to join one training na I really didn't like. Sabi niya, sige lang, magdala na tayo ng damit for you. Parang, no, I don't like. And then, I was forced to join. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> Pero yon. And then, after that day, I didn't stop training. Tuloy-tuloy ako. Siguro it was a factor din that I'm with my cousins. Na we just did it with the Milo summer program. And then, after nun, di ko in-expect na I'll be part of the national team. Ganyan. So, at that time, that was 2000. 2000, yeah. So, 2000, parang I started with my taekwondo journey. And then 2008, I became, I became a national team member. And then because I'm still, I actually stopped for a while because I was studying. I, I, I wasn't able to commit with the trainings, but then I continued after my graduation. And then I didn't expect that I'll be part of the national team. Tas tuloy, tuloy na yun. And then I joined the competition nga, 2000. Ayun, 2009, nagdun kami na good. Pero we joined a lot of competitions na hindi kami nananalo. Pero yun, yun yung journey ng taekwondo ko. <laughs> uh, ako naman, um, my dad influenced me to join sports. Uh, kasi nga yung dad ko was also uh, very athletic nung time niya. Uh, he was into swimming, basketball, soccer. So marami siyang sports na sinalihan before. And then... My first sport na na-introduce sa akin ng dad ko was swimming. So, hindi naman yung formal na lesson, but he taught me how to swim. Siguro yung first formal um, sport ko was basketball. Uh, yun din yung uh, nilalaro ng dad ko. Every time may game yung dad ko, sinasama niya ako, ina-expose niya ako sa basketball. And then one time, uh, nakita ng dad ko na may interest ako sa basketball, he... Uh, enrolled me sa Milo Best Center. Yan. So, doon nag-start yung uh, aking sports journey. I think I was uh, six or seven. Seven or eight, mga ganon. Nag-start ako Milo Best Center. And then after that, um, nagkaroon din ng mga awards. Uh, then after that, grade, I think, grade five, and then, pero sige, bago yung taekwondo, I, I also joined the ano, SBP and Paserel in our school. Sa, so, part din ako ng varsity team ng basketball sa school namin. And then, grade 5, nawala yung basketball program sa school namin. But then, um, gusto ko talaga yung may ginagawa eh. Uh, that time, fan din ako ng uh, martial arts. Fan ako ni Bruce Lee. Yan. So, nakikita ko yung mga moves niya, si... Sir Monsul Del Rosario, uh, Del Rosario na ikita ko yung mga movies niya. So, nung nakakita ako ng mga nagtataekwondo sa turf, sabi ko parang ganito yung mga napapanood ko. Ah. Try ko nga. So, hanggang sa yun na, uh, sumali na ako. And then, actually, that time, uh, hindi pa alam ng parents ko na sumali ako sa taekwondo, actually. And then, one time, in-invite ko na yung parents ko sa training. Um, kasi nga, alam mo naman, pag parents, ayaw na sasaktan yung mga anak. Diba? So, akala nila ganun yung taekwondo. But when I invited them to to watch the training, oh, okay naman pala. And then, nakita nila that I have potential. So, doon na nagtuloy-tuloy yung support sa akin ng parents ko until, yun na, mag-college. And, yun nga, because of taekwondo, nakakuha din ako ng scholarship. So, hanggang sa nakapasok na rin ng national team. And then, nakasali na ng mga SEA Games, Asian Games. So, yun. That's quite a discovery, no? I mean, of course, we all know the common factors. Your your family or your parents encourage you to play sports, but of course, with us and the viewers not knowing, nasi Japo yung pala basketball player dante, yes. <laughs> And could have made it big. Kung hindi man lang, kung hindi, if uh, you know basketball did stop, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's a it, it's a, a a nice uh, insight from you, no? I mean, first up for the viewers, for those who don't know. Um, Given given your accomplishments, no, I mean, of course, there are numerous championships that you won, medals, and everything. I'd like to talk more about, or like to ask, what were the most impactful memories that you have in your Taekwondo journey? Any mga breakthrough moments or any challenges that you that you experienced that actually altered or or kind of changed the way the way you looked at the sport or the way uh, you attacked the sport after that? So, let's start with you first, Janice. 
Yeah, um, for me, kasi, um, I, because diba, I just graduated from nursing that time, I also passed the board exam already, and I'm also hired to a hospital. And I was actually training already. It's my first day, and I actually asked for an excuse to be absent for 20 days because of training. Of training. So that was my first day in training as a nurse. And then the HR called me already. Like, she asked me already to decide which one I like. Parang, ah, grabe naman. Parang, first day ko pa lang, di ba? And then, parang, she told me na lang na parang, just ima- just um think of this na parang, taekwondo is, this is an opportunity, one time opportunity. Maybe it's just this one that you're going to join and the hospital is just here. So, maybe if you choose the taekwondo, it will, it you can win the medal or it, something can happen like that. So, pinili ko yung taekwondo. So, ginive up ko yung pagiging nurse ko and I chose taekwondo. So, I was really nervous at that time kasi sinabi ko rin sa parents ko yun na parang, sige, try ko mag-taekwondo. Stop muna ako sa pagiging nurse. And then, um, that was 2009 and that was our big break as an athlete also. Kasi 2009, we first joined the World Championships and nagulat kami na nag-world champion kami at that time. So parang grabe, sacrifice paid off. So, and then after parang two days lang ata kami, galing dun sa championships na yun, we really, ha- we had to go to ano, parang naglaba lang kami sa, ba- sa Philippines. We had to go to to Laos na, to four sea games. And then we were really overwhelmed na nag-gold ulit kami. Kaya parang, okay, yung kapalit, it's a big ano pala, parang... It's my it's a good sacrifice na ginawa ko yun kasi this was the parang kapalit nung lahat ng sacrifice ko. So feeling ko yun yung parang naging naging impact ng taekwondo ko na. Pinili ko yung taekwondo. Muna, muna. <laughs> well, for me um super daming challenges no when you're an athlete, no? Um siguro yung biggest challenge for me was my first big, yung talagang major injury na nangyari sa akin na ito naman World Championships 2013 um siguro when you assess yung yung bracket ang pinakamababa ko nang pwedeng makuha is silver yun na yung pinakamababa silver medal for the World Championships na medyo matagal-tagal na rin natin hindi nakukuha yung magka-medal sa World Championships. And then, nung first round, I was leading eh. Kalaban ko, China. I was leading by mga, siguro, five points. Um, umabot ng score namin was 10-0. Pag uh, pasok ng, ng third round, 10-0. Third round, first few seconds, pagsipa ko, nag-snap yung hamstring ko. And then that time, yun na, hindi na ako makatayo. Uh, actually, pinilit ko pa lumaban. Lumaban pa ako. Kaya lang hindi ko na talaga maisipa yung leg ko. Kasi pag yung leg ko na injured yung, yung tinapa ko, nahuhulog. Tapos pag yun naman yung sinipa ko, sobrang sakit naman. So, na-disqualify ako in short. So, after the game, talagang sobra yung iyak ko na nangyari sa akin yun. Di ba? But again, um, andiyan yung parents ko na sumusuport sa akin, di ba? And that time, uh, girlfriend ko na rin si Janice nun. So, andun din siya, di ba? Plus din yon for me. So, andun din siya to, to support me na sabihin na okay lang yan, na makakabalik ka pa. And then, yun nga, um, yun yung mga parang ginagawa nating uh, mga sacrifices as an athlete. Kasi alam naman natin, yung pagiging champion, hindi lang naman yan nananalo ka ng awards, nananalo ka ng medals. Yung pagiging champion is kung paano mo dalhin yung sarili mo, yung attitude mo as an athlete, yung tamang mindset, di ba? And yun din yung maganda ngayon, dahil hin- hanggang ngayon, nadala pa rin namin siya. Di ba? As, as parents, as coaches, kaya nga di ba sinasabi ng Milo na uh, champion mula noon hanggang ngayon. Kumbaga, hindi nawawala yun sa'yo. Kumbaga, kung noon, as an athlete, lahat ng values na natututunan mo with sports, and then pagdating mo naman ng, eto, yung career natin, 
as, as a coach and parents, nadadala pa rin natin siya. I like that. I like what you said. No? Yung, yung champion support from your parents yeah. and then of course, champion effort mula noon hanggang ngayon. And uh, yeah, and, and that's that's really you know something that we can really pick up no? to have that winning ways. Yung ganun talaga yung, yung complexity ng sport. Eh? You win some, you lose some. There are heartaches, but you always bounce back. And then I admire the passion that both of you have actually uh, um, em- embodied Diba? To make sure that you followed your career and what you want. It's kind of okay dito, diba? You do you did what you want, pero okay pa rin tayo ngayon. You're still able to to have a family and, and, and to be able to watch this. So this is great. This is great. So now I will pass you on to Simone for our first line of questioning. Um, you know, as some of the top athletes in the country, you know, you've had your fair share of challenges and sacrifices that you had to make. And and of course, we're we're very you know, well aware of, of the achievements you you guys have. I mean, following you guys in the news. But but now you are in this relatively new phase in your life uh, as parents. And we're curious to know how that's going for you. I mean, you have two sons now, Jace and Jevy, who are four and one years old. And um, but let's wind it back back to when you when you first found out you were pregnant with with Jay. So, you know, how was that experience like for you having your first child? Um, it was super exciting actually because we planned already after getting married to have a baby and um, we were so excited as parents and um, it's our first baby so medyo kinakabahan din at the same time because we don't know how it's going to happen, how we're going to parent that kid. But really, we're so happy and excited when we f- we found out that I'm pregnant with Jace. How is it like for you, Japo, as a as as a first time dad? Um, of course, uh, very happy. Na nung I, we found out that Janice was pregnant, so we were very happy and of course excited at the same time nervous. Kasi nga first time. Uh, yun din, um, maraming mga tumatakbo sa isip on how to, yun nga, papalakihin yung kid, di ba? Kung mapapalaki ba namin siya ng tama. Um, siguro, I think, naging, ano rin yung, ano eh, parang pagiging athlete namin and pagiging coach. Um, kasi parang na, nako-compare namin siya sa parenting, yung coaching. So parang, yun lang din, parang inisip namin na let's apply it lang sa, sa magiging kid natin. Denise, uh, I'm, you, you mean, I mean, you're an athlete and of course, uh, there, there are physically, there are expectations people have of us, di ba? Um, were, there, were there sort of some expectations on you also as a mother giving birth or being pregnant at that time that, that you experienced? Yeah, actually, um, they're actually expecting me to give birth naturally because I'm an athlete now. But what happened is, but the pregnancy is okay. It was okay. I'm fine. I was able to um, have a uh, normal, normal pregnancy journey. But the thing is, I wasn't contracting at that time. So, yun nga, hindi ako na give birth normally. And was actually, I gave birth through a cesarean section. And the doctor really was so excited pa naman to see me push daw kasi yung athlete mm-hmm. ako, kung kaya-kaya ko daw mag-push, ganyan. But it, this happened, but the recovery was really um, um, easy for me and people are still as, still saying na parang athlete ka kasi kaya madali kang nag-recover, ganyan. Okay sa recovery, hindi ka nasasaktan. Sabi ko mataas din yung pain tolerance ko, that's why it's easy for me to recover siguro. Tsaka nilalakasan ko lang loob ko na I, I need to walk after I give birth, I need to ganyan kasi... Ayoko yung nakahiga lang talaga kasi mas mahirapan ako pag hihiga lang ako so I really forced myself to walk after I gave birth. Ingat lang syempre. Such an interesting perspective no like a unique um, challenge also to to have especially as an athlete it's such a interesting um, expectation. Pero um for you for both of you Japa Japo and then Janice, I mean, you guys are, are both athletes and now you guys are coaches and especially like during this time that the um, that you guys uh, started becoming parents, starting a family, and you've had you have responsibilities um, for your sport. Um, how was that like having to balance those two, family and your sport? Well, for me, 
that time, uh, medyo nahirapan ako before since I was a first-time dad. And then I'm coaching the Philippine team and uh, university teams, DLSU and CSB. So, yun din. Um, of course, kailangan lang din ng time management. Um, yung training namin sa university, DLSU and CSB, in the morning naman, early in the morning. So, when I go back naman here at home, actually, tulog pa naman sila. So, at least, okay yung, yung time. And then, pag gising nila, ako naman yung tulog. <laughs> De, joke lang. <laughs> joke lang. Pero, pag gising nila, at least, yung time namin, nakakabond kami, nakapaglaro kami, um, kasama ko sila nagla-lunch. And then, after that, in the afternoon naman, I have national team duties. So, at night naman. So, I think, um, for me, blessing din sa, sa akin yung nangyari na ganun yung nagiging arrangement. Kasi we get to do our coaching jobs and parenting na at least hindi, alam mo yun, hindi nag-overlap. Kung baga, yun nga, nagagawa ko yung coaching duties ko. At the same time, nakapag, naaalagaan ko yung kids and nakapag-band ako with them. And then, yun nga, um, si, nung lumalaki si Jace, uh, I was still in the national team. Actually, medyo, yun nga, ang medyo nahirapan ako is pagka umaalis kami ng, ng bansa, inter, yung international competitions. Almost every month, I think, meron kami international competitions. Mawawala kami ng one week, two weeks. So, doon ako medyo nahirapan. That's why, nung time na yun, um, tama, no? Bag, bago lumabas si Jevy, yung second uh, child namin, I decided to resign sa aking national team duties to give, uh, yun nga, prioritize my my family. For me naman, parang I had um, to sacrifice a lot din. Kasi, syempre, I'm the mom who really takes care of the ki- the baby na. Ako yung nagbe-breastfeed. Because I really want them, I really want my kids to be breastfed. And, um, I had to leave the house and then pump then and then yun yung mga sacrifices na kailangan mo and then that my training is also in the morning so I teach in the morning for UP Diliman I leave the baby tas may iwan lang akong milk sa kanya to pump outside while I'm away and then I have to teach muna and then I come back buti na lang what's good about our our work is hindi siya yung eight hours a day yes. talaga ako nakahiwalay sa baby. Like, morning lang, two hours lang ako mawawala. Then, in the in the evening, meron kaming celebrity. So, two hours or three hours lang din kami mawawala. Which is, nababalance talaga namin. Kasi yung daytime namin is with the kids. And, at least, uh, may time pa rin. We have so much time with them also. Kaya, natutu- natutukan din namin si Jace talaga at that time. It's nice to see that you guys still find time to to be with your kids and also be able to do all that all that work. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, you guys are both athletes and both top athletes as that uh, at that. And uh, having Jace, having your first kid, um, when you first had him or when you knew you're gonna have him, did you already have a specific mindset on on how you plan to raise him? Um, as first-time parents, sometimes kasi we we go by the book or but so we read we read articles or books about being how to raise your kids. But syempre, it really depends on how it's gonna how it's gonna be day by day. And and sobrang it was actually different talaga with every kid. So, si Jace naman, he wasn't hard to parang to be taken care of. So, um, medyo, kasi may support system din kami with our parents, si Japoy. As in, tul- tulong-tulongan talaga kami with with um, taking care of Jace. Like, when he was born, I breastfeed, siya taga burp. So, gising talaga kami pareho. para fair, di ba? <laughs> gising kami at night pareho. So, take, ano talaga, taking different responsibilities when taking care of the kids. And sobrang, it's really important na may, if someone wants to help you as to take care of your kids, go 
accept nyo. Kasi may mga ibang parents na we don't want, it's okay, we can do it, kanyan. Pero if someone wants to help you, let them help you. Yun ang advice ko lang sa mga parents. When you take care of your kids, lalo niya pag mga newborn and first-time parents. So what are your aspirations for Jace? <laughs> Gusto ko, ano, hindi, joke lang. Uh, for me naman, uh, actually, napag-usapan naman na namin to ni Janice, we want him to be a taekwondo black belter. <laughs> De, no pero pressure. No, no pressure naman yon. Basta mag-training lang siya, even kahit na hindi competitive. Pero we let him, ano pa rin, we'll let him choose kung ano talaga yung sport na gusto niya. Yeah, we'll let him explore pa rin yes. kung anong sport. And like now, we um, we actually started him with taekwondo pair once a week lang. Kasi he's just four years old. We just want him to try it mm, ganyan, and enjoy it. Expose siya. Yeah. Sa mga different kinds of sports. Yeah, we tried also football already with his tita Jessica, tita coach Jessica. So, um, he tried that already. Kaya lang napapagod-pagod pa siya ng onte <laughs> Kasi baby pa kasi. Pero we just let him. Tapos, we just laugh with him when he's tired. Parang, oh, you're tired. Yan. Oh, go, go, go. Parang, parang pinapa-enjoy ko lang. Hindi mm-hmm. ko talaga pinipressure when we do, when he does the sport naman. Mm-hmm. And siguro yung isa pa sa maganda kasi we see na interested si Jay sa sports. Kasi whenever na, kunyari yun nga, yung football, um, talagang binibigay niya yung 100% niya. Makikita mo sa kanya na ginagawa niya yung drills. Pero syempre, pag kids naman, alam natin medyo madali mapagod, di ba? So sometimes, mag, ano siya, maglilikot, pero babalik siya ulit. Pero when you see him do the drills, talagang ginagawa niya ng maayos. Parang like, we can see na he's, ano, an, ha, he has an athlete, parang attitude na competitive. Yes. Parang kami. <laughs> Hindi ako nagpapatalo dito kahit ano. <laughs> And yun nga, namimirror talaga niya yung nakikita niya lalo si daddy niya. Pag, alam mo yung fancy kicks ng daddy niya, yung mga famous fancy kicks. Gusto niya, gagayahin niya. Mm-hmm. And nakikita niya sa amin na ginagawa namin. Kaya I think he's really interested in sports and in taekwondo also. Kasi mm-hmm. he sees us doing it. And then yun nga, uh, lately lang, dun sa aming Milo Summer Clinic, taekwondo clinic, Sinali namin si Jace. Tiningnan lang namin kung ano yung gagawin niya, ano yung magiging reaction niya. And nagulat kami natapos niya yung one hour session. Natuloy-tuloy. So, ako naman, as a dad and a coach, I'm very happy and of course proud din na nakasabay si Jace dun sa, sa program. Di ba? So, very happy naman na nagpapakita siya ng interest sa sports. I love hearing that. I mean, start them, start them young, de ba? Yes. That was yung one hour. That's a lot, ah. I mean, yes. usually at their age, mga 30 minutes lang max yun. Pero he's able to keep up. Yes. So I mean, and I'm curious to hear what what Doc Shoves has to say so far with what you've shared. Super, dami talaga natin mapipick up, no? Like, ako, I'm like listening intently to what Japo and Janice, you know, were actually saying and what the journey it was. So it was pretty evident how the couple took on the challenge no, of parenting to different age stages. Eh? Imagine um, a newborn and then there was a toddler. No? Definitely, iba talaga yung mga needs ng bawat stage na yon. Um, In our practice kasi, we have this what we call a concept of age-appropriate level. no. So it really holds a huge um, role no, in how we deal with these children. no. So just to... You know, uh, let you know, this actually refers to a concept whereby certain activities may be deemed appropriate or inappropriate to a child's stage, no? For example, yung favorite example namin, concept of sharing. So, uh, for those who are younger, no? So, two years below, parang they might not really understand pa the concept of sharing, no? So, no matter what you tell them um, to share, hindi pa nila talaga maintindihan yon So, pwedeng ma-frustrate lang kayo if you don't see them practicing the concept of sharing. So, it is actually um, thought that development most occurs, you know, parang may stage kasi talaga yan. So, we actually look at how each is functioning so, para tayo, meron tayong sarili expectation natin. So, this in turn will actually build the cognitive development of the child, no? So, to make it simple lang, when we say cognitive development, this is the 
their ability to think, their ability to process, to problem solve. And then, so this will actually make way for them to parang um, learn no? how to approach their experiences. Okay? So if you notice, parang si uh, Janice at si Japoy parang different um, child, different yung atake nila. Kasi nga, iba ang ano eh, iba talaga yung understanding nila. So now, parang if you notice, parang listening to Japoy, parang na-enjoy na niya yung parang mo, you know, si si kuya, no? Kasi nga, parang nakikita na niya, he can see some, somehow of himself, no? Si kay kuya. Tapos, kumbaga, parang um, nag, kasi syempre, if you notice, talaga nagmamature sila. As they grow older, nag-iiba yung mga perspective nila. Okay? So, before, sabi natin, hindi niya to ma-understand. Ngayon, you mentioned, di ba? One, an hour's time, talagang naupuan niya. No? So, that's a clue to us that nag evolve yung understanding nila. So, and this way, parang na-promote nila Janice and Japo yung pag-ano eh, pag-develop uh, ng cognitive skills, no? Actually, just by spending time with them, just by playing with them. So, di ba, parang I hope pe- the parents listening now will parang will not be so bent on the academics na letting their children learn the ABC as early as what, three, four years old, when in fact, the best way that they will actually learn is for you to interact with them, to play with them, to bond with them, di ba? Kay Japo yun mismo from experience that when he noticed, di ba, parang he really found time pa despite the busy schedule, no? Nilang dalawa. And we saw how well it worked for them, di ba? As early as how old pa lang, talagang nagkaroon na ng hilig, no? So that itself, no, made him mature na talaga. So, grabe, I hope all the parents are listening and getting talagang inspired by, you know, their stories. Because I myself is really parang super inspired na. That's great, Doc, no? So, um, and uh, we've, we've only gone through like a, a, the first portion of our program. There's so much more to tell. But what I've liked for, uh, with what the uh, the, the couple I've shared so far is like all this attention on uh, on Jace, right? And 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 Japoy knows this. Great things start from small beginnings. So I, I'm very sure that you know we have a lot to look forward to with regard to his development. Hopefully, as a future you know athlete, I don't want to say anything. I know you don't want to pressure him, right? But so I mean, let's move on um, with the with the life journey. How is it like, Naman, when you found out that Jace will be a kuya? And how did you prepare him for the arrival of Jevi? And maybe you can also add in there how how, how Jace is as a queer right now. Um, so Jace, um, actually Jevi, we planned Jevi also. So when I, when Jace turned two, we tried um, having an, our next baby na. So we were happy that um, I got pregnant at that time. And Jace actually didn't like it at first. Like, he's like, don't, don't, don't call me kuya, don't call me kuya. Tapos parang, we just um, let him come with us during um, hospital visits, um, checkups, ultrasound. We show, him, we show him the ultrasound at the baby. And then I have this app also when, where you see the baby stage, like you, from that small thing to, embryo yeah, to from the embryo to, yeah. and he's, he's actually getting interested already. And, he asks me for the app already every day. I want to see the baby. I want to see the baby. And then he listens to my tummy already. Later, mga later, later mm-hmm. yon. And then he, when he kicks also, so later on, when we call him, Jace, Jace, no, I'm kuya. Ganun na. So parang nagulat kami. Wow, he accepted already that he's a kuya. Until na parang um, when I gave birth, sobrang excited siya. As in, it was just my checkup, and then he was really waiting at like mga around 10 p.m. Na, no? I arrived mm. there. I sa, dumating ako sa room ko at mga 10 p.m. He was still there, really wanted to see his brother, and he was so happy. He didn't want to go home. He just wants to stay there, sa brother niya. So I was so happy na okay si Jace as kuya. Until now, sobrang lambing nila. Siya malambing talaga siya dun sa brother niya. So, mm. And we were so happy na si Jevi dumating talaga kasi we really planned it. Gusto ko ganun yung 
gap age nila gap. Eh, yung age gap nila what mga 3 2 to 3 years pero 3 years sila yes ako um yun nga nung time nga di ba sabi ni Janice ayaw niya parang do you want to have a baby brother or baby sister ang sagot niya sa amin palagi is no pero yun nga parang mindset namin siya kung paano di ba oh you're you're going to have a baby brother di ba you 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 protect him or her <laughs> And then you play with him or you play with her. Sabi namin ganyan. So you you have a new playmate, di ba? And then you have to take care of your your younger sibling. Sabi namin ganyan. Tapos kinukwentuhan nga namin every night. This is your your baby uh, brother or baby sister. Like yun sa app nga. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is how the baby looks like. Inside the tummy. Tapos parang binibigyan na namin siya ng mga responsibilities <laughs> ng pagiging kuya. Mm-hmm. So siya naman, oh, gustong gusto ko yan. <laughs> well, gusto niya kasi yung ganyan, binibigyan siya ng, ng responsibility. Eh, di ba? You, you teach him uh, sports, you teach him how to be a good boy or good girl, parang ganyan. So siya parang naman mindset siya na, oh, okay, kasali ako dito. Okay. Na, di ba, uh, hindi siya mawawala sa amin, kundi kasama namin siya to you know, welcome the new, the new baby. So, so, so ngayon, ang gusto niya, he wants daw two more boys and two more girls. <laughs> so, no, G, sabi ko. <laughs> well, that's great. You, you, you can put your own basketball team together. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It, it speaks all about, you know, um, helping reframe the mindset of um, Jay's. And what I liked about what you said also, it's really involving him in the journey. As you mentioned, giving him responsibility so much so that you're also building his character. Super awesome advice there. Now maybe let's um, let's fast track a year later. So right now, um, having a couple of toddlers is a sure big challenge, right? Um, but so so what were the challenges like early on, and how did you handle them both? Um, for me, I had a hard time. Parang nakakaron pa ako ng parang konsensya na parang I can't play that much with Je- Jay's at first when Jevy was born kasi I had to breastfeed him like almost every hour tas syempre I'm recovering also from my cesarean section so parang minsan na feel bad ako for Jay's but buti na lang just si Daddy Japoy na who plays with him a lot tas parang some parents are comforting me also na parang, don't worry, it's just a phase. Um, it will be better in the next few months. And and with taking care of the baby, we involve him. Like, no una, Jace, cri- Jace cries when the baby cries. As in, laging umiiyak si Jace pag may, siguro naninibago siya with, with another kid na may umiiyak. Tapos, we make sure also na Jace, napapansin si Jace mm-hmm. when someone's arriving or siya una mong papansinin because siya yung mas nakakaintindi and the other one is just um, a baby pa naman. So we really had to adjust to the different age nila. So kay J- Jace talaga we have to, um, yung approach namin sa kanya is different. And so far it was really good and maka- nakaka-play ko na sila mm-hmm. pareho ngayon. So... <laughs> Right. I like it no, that you mentioned like um how you parang prepared um Kuya no sa arrival ni Javi kasi you know another building block in a developing child um aside from the one that I mentioned a while ago of cognitive intellectual development is actually the social emotional abilities okay? so to briefly explain this it's actually the ability of uh, children to understand what they are what they are feeling and how to interact with each other, right? So experiences, you know, um, sharing emotions would be those that can teach them a lot, okay? So, and, you know, in the future, this will influence how we perceive ourselves, like how we build our confidence, how we empathize with other people, how we develop our, you know, future relationships and how we um, maintain them. And actually, as a matter of fact, you know, there are actually studies that will tell us if med- if you have a healthier uh, social emotional skills, it will equate to a more successful, um, say, career, a uh, success in academics, and you know, marriage. Okay, so parang dito again, no? Parang I'm I'm impressed that Japoy and Janice parang um bullseye, no? Parang you know the the way they prepared Puya for the arrival of uh, Jevi 
parang ito yung classic example how to build the social emotional development of a child okay so again no parang we would go back to what we call the age appropriate level no so at that time what maybe kuya was barely uh, a little less than four di ba so at this time parang you know um the ability to understand uh the arrival of a, a newborn or a baby sibling no kumbaga parang pwedeng ma-confuse sila no parang ang that time again ang level nila siguro ang understanding nila ay parang meron ng bagong baby so parang the attention might not be um all to me na no ba kasi for a time ilang years din na puro kay kuya lang no ba so parang um definitely you did the right thing no kumbaga parang involving kuya no in the caring of ano um caring of uh Jebby no kasi parang it actually will help build them character no so di ba sabi ko nga kanina from experience di ito yung magti-teach sa kanila okay so since yan binigyan niya siya ng more responsibility more experiences para more parang mas naisip niya tuloy ah it's not so bad having a sibling right parang oh masaya naman pala si parang i'm a big brother i can do this parang oh look parang he so para i'm sure he was so proud of himself that he was able to help out, di ba, in caring for siguro. Usually yan, hilig nila, parang, di ba, they will give the bottle, kunwari sila mag-feed, no? Parang ganon. Tapos, in essence, I like the fact also that you mentioned yung family support, di ba? So, it seemed really, no, parang naging integral ang support system in your family. So, start pa tayo way back sa, ano, no, sa families nyo, both respective families, no? So, parang, in essence, you yourselves, no? Jepoy, Japoy and um, Janice have healthy social-emotional skills because they are actually nurturing the experiences they had, you know, way back when they were still younger. So, now, parang, ito yung parang pinagkapitan nila, actually, to build on the relationship this time with their children na. So, ah. Thanks, Doc. That's uh, quite amazing uh, insight, no? And, for you, Japoy and Janice, it's really it's quite an amazing approach, no? So two years down the road, when you have your third baby, <laughs> that you have to work on. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, but but this is something that the viewers I uh, hope are learning uh, in terms of you know how, what to expect, no? Especially when there's another sibling that's gonna come around. Um, I'd like to touch on what you what you guys talked about uh, uh, in the earlier in the with with Sim, no, regarding like si Kuya Jace, like at, at age four ba, uh, you already exposed to taekwondo and then of course to football. Please to learn sa football, please <laughs> more football players. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I think really the importance of uh, you know having a sporting activity, no. So my question to you guys is. You know what role does the the sport uh, play in your family and as parents and in raising your kids? Um, Shempre, as athletes, before we want our kids to be um, athletes also or be active, and we want our family to be active also, and exposing Jays na mas maaga or exposing them through us, makikita nila with us. It's um, nice to have also us bonding with the family and it's also fun for the kids also trying different sports. So it's a good, ano rin, parang for them na, um, lalo na ngayon, na parang to have good, uh, uh, different activities. So, um, yun. And of course, you see them also na parang learning the values that we learned also as athletes, like being like CJ's nakikita namin yung determination niya when he does things, like really competitive talaga siya and he wants it to do it right, asking us to look at him pa mm-hmm. and check him when he does this. And we re- we're really happy na sa family namin, we were able to parang pass through also na pagiging active kasi nga um, us before like our parents what our parents did we have our bonding like sports every summer talaga and nagiging parang um, 
uh, hobbies namin yung mga sports, different sports, and at least napapasa namin, which is dapat i-expose nyo lang yung kids nyo with uh, different kinds of sports para within the family, um, you be healthy and magkaroon ng healthy lifestyle. Yes, and siguro for me, uh, very big role talaga yung, yung sports sa family. Like for me kasi, uh, my family before, ito yung ginagawa naming banding yung pagpunta sa training, yung pa lang, nagbabanding na kami, sama-sama kami pupunta sa training, di ba? Lalo na yung mom ko, siya yung, yung gumagawa ng aking healthy breakfast before ng training or yung snack, di ba? Uh, pagdating ng competition, makikita mo lahat ng kamag-anak mo, nandyan, pamilya mo, lolo mo, lola mo. So it's a big, ano eh, big family reunion. Parang ganun yung nangyayari. Na, alam mo yun, parang, for me, sobrang saya nung memory ko na yon. Dahil kapag kami sports activities, lahat ng, kamag- lahat ng kamag-anak ko, tito, tita, na ikita ko. So, talagang yun yung isa din sa tumatak sa akin. Na, kumaga, lalo na, di ba yung dad ko, siya ngayon nag-influence sa akin sa sports. So, every time may sports activities, dad ko, kasama ako, doon ako natututo. Um, Siyempre, as a, as a kid, di ba? Makikita mo yung, yung daddy mo to play sports. Parang ikaw, parang siyempre, go daddy, di ba? Parang ikaw rin, parang gusto mo yung ginagawa ng daddy mo. Na gusto mo maging ganun din, gusto mo mag-basketball din, kung ano yung ginagawa ng daddy mo. So, for us naman, kami ni Janice, we try to, yun nga, be a role model for, for our kids na makikita rin nila kami na uh, nagsusports, Diba? So, pati sila, yung interest nila sa sports, parang tumataas din talaga. And then with that, um, kaming family, nagagawa namin yung sport na gusto namin. Nakasama yung mga kids namin. So, yun din yung gusto namin doon, na nagiging bonding namin right now. na Kasi before the pandemic, si JC nasama na namin sa gym. Ganyan, nakikita na kami sumisipa. So, siya, kahit hindi namin siya tinuturuan, makikita mo siya sa isang tabi, sumisipa na rin. So makikita, oy okay ha, nagpapakita na siya ng interest. So doon na kami parang, o oh, sige, uh, unti-unti na natin si Jace. Alam niya na to. So medyo mas nadalian na kami to introduce nga yung taekwondo talaga sa kanya. Na nakikita niya kami ni Janice na yun din yung gusto na ginagawa namin. That's great, no? I think, uh, yun nga, parang may formula na kayo. It's easy as athletes, no? But for, let's say for parents, no? For parents who yung hindi naman mahilig sa you know hindi naman active as you guys diba parang how do you how do you encourage them the parents to you know to encourage their kids to actually get into sports or pursue their dreams i mean what what is the approach there no? if if it was an, a normal uh, parents you know hindi in the elite athletes like like you guys diba how, what is what would be your advice to them for me kasi talaga i keep on saying this is really exposure parang like um, exposing them to different kinds of sports and um, check, don't force them to do the things that they want, they don't want to do. Kasi like me, parang there's a parent, kasi I'm a coach of Taekwondo, di ba? Tapos there's a parent who tells me na parang, who told me na, um, coach, parang ayaw muna mag Taekwondo ni, ano, ni ganyan-ganyan. Tapos parang sabi ko, yeah, it's okay, let him rest first. Parang let him try another sport also. Siguro, I don't force, parang natuwa yung parents sa akin, wow, coach, at least um, parang hindi mo finoforce na, hindi, tuloy nyo, try nyo pa si, try nyo lang ulit, baka ayaw lang niya ganyan-ganyan. So parang natuwa yung parents na parang, wow, thank you for um, letting him rest first, parang not forcing him to do Taekwondo. Kasi they will not um they will not excel pag pinipilit mo sila. So whatever they like, doon sila mag-excel eh. Kahit naman ikaw, di ba? Parang when you do something na ayaw mo, parang gagawin mo ba yung best mo? Hindi, di ba? So when you do what you really want, you what yung ginagawa mo, you, you want it, you will do your best in it and you will excel. After that, mag-excel ka na eh pag ginagawa mo yung best mo. Yes. Yeah, yun lang. Just expose them and let them choose what they want. Don't choose for them. Yes. Yeah. Well, for me naman, um, for those parents na hindi naman yung talagang active talaga, um, pwede naman nilang gawin to introduce yung uh, meron naman tayong mga videos na pwede papanood sa kanila. Diba? Hindi naman natin sila ibababad. Papakita lang natin. Kunyari, for me, uh, nanonood ka ng NBA, so, makikita na, ano, oh, oh, sports, di ba? 
Tapos, i- kunyari sa YouTube, um, papakita mo yung Milo Champion Habit, di ba? Makikita mo yung mga exercises na ginagawa ng mga instructional uh, videos, di ba? Na pwede na- nilang gawin, na hindi naman kailangan gawin, kunyari, ng parents din na sobrang uh, hardcore, di ba? So, may mga instructions doon na pwede gawin, na masusundan ng bata. So, yun, yun yung mga parang mga way na pwede nating uh, gawing active yung mga kids natin. Or simply, turuan sila ng mga uh, nilalaro natin before, like piko, mga ganyan, <laughs> di ba? So, doon pala mag enjoy na yung mga kids. And let's be, ano, parang be creative tayo. Um, like for me, kunyari, uh, syempre, ayaw naman natin na palaging nasa gadgets yung mga yung mga kids natin. So, let's make it fun for them yung mga activities na pwede natin gawin. Like, gawa natin sila ng obstacle course. Oh, Jays, gawin mo to. Oh, oh, you hop here and then run here. Tapos parang, parang ganun lang yung gagawin natin. So, for the parents, uh, marami, marami tayong pwede gawin. Yun nga, yung mga instructional videos and everything. So, kaya-kaya natin yan. <laughs> yeah, and meron nga mga parents din na nagjo-join din ng taekwondo yes. with the kids. So, if Uh-oh. you can do it with them, why not? Pero kung di talaga kaya, mag-instructional videos. Yes. <laughs> yes. Grabe, you know, listening to you, pwede na ata mag-resign sa trabaho. <laughs> kasi, kasi yung swak na, you know, I'm really impressed out, really on how athletes actually cultivate the value of sports. Eh. Kung baga parang super in your everyday life na nga, ika nga. And now, I can see that you are passing it on the children, right? So, but for me, no, the essence, parang the most important role that apparently sports play in the, your family is parang nurturing the physical aspect of your children's um, development, no? Which is very, very critical actually in this um, children's generation, aka the digital uh, generation, di ba? So, um, parang, I believe, no, if you get them early on, active lifestyle, talagang, it will, you know, refrain us from falling into that trap of the digital kids nga, ika nga, no? So, just an FY, FYI, no, the recommendation, no, for about mga children, three to five years old, is actually about 180 minutes of physical activity daily. So that's what? Three hours? But sadly, di ba? Parang children nowadays, parang, I don't know, of course, pre-pandemic, di ba? Parang pansin ninyo, mas nahirapan na tayong palabasin sila as opposed to our time, di ba? Na parang nahihirapan yung mga magulang natin pa tayo because we're just outdoor playing. And I like the way, the um, statement that Japo mentioned, you know, let's all be creative, di ba? parang be out there yung obstacle course, di ba? Super, especially now, the pandemic, kahit na actually sa hallway, you can actually do that. Eh. We still have mga parang, we call this yung mga parang mask and tape, di ba? Like, you can make those lines na, di ba? Tapos piko, di ba? How I wish we could bring down, uh, bring back the time na nagpapatintero mga bata, di ba? Parang we no longer see them, no? As it is, parang super nandyan na lang sila sa gadget nila. Diba? Parang, I can't stress the uh, importance of an active lifestyle because, you know, parang right now, talagang super dumadami yung cases ng mga obese uh, children and then, of course, in the future, sila yung develop early on ng hypertension, um, heart problems. Diba? Tapos, another thing that I'm so, parang I want to stress, no, is the uh, modeling, no? Parang ilan beses na nabanggit, no? Nina Japo yung Janice, how parang nakita nila yung importance ng modeling. O- also remember, no? For us parents, tayo kasi yung unang kumaga, when we say modeling, no? Parang yung mga bata, gagayahin nila. Kung sino yung feeling nila yung dapat i-idolize, no? So, who better um, parang to show them the right way, no, um, will be the parents, diba? Just at the same way that, you know, um, Janice and Japoy took over, I mean, took on, no, from what they've um, actually experienced from their parents, diba? Parang, diba, they mentioned that their parents were actually active, um, you know, they led an active lifestyle themselves, diba? So, kumbaga, parang na-pass on lang. So, that's the beauty of modeling. So, it's one of the parang um, behavior theories that, you know, very, uh, yeah, t- time-tested na talaga. We've learned so much from what you've shared with us today. And, and if you were to summarize 
What can we learn from your journey so far on how to raise a champion? Um, of course, um, we have to really um, know that our kids have different personalities, have different ages. So we have to really raise them differently and talk to them differently. Our approach is different to, for every age. And then, of course, uh, very important din to, no? have a good support system. Yeah, and syempre, of course, pag mag-asawa kayo, you have to uh, support each other. And then, hindi lang yon. syempre, kung uh, nandiyan yung mga lolos and lolas, di ba? Friends. Diba? friends. Um, yun din, yung isa sa pwede nyong gawing support system. Like for us, ni Janice, uh, kunyari, kami pareho, di ba? Medyo busy and everything, di ba? Andiyan yung lolo and lola nila to, of course, support us sa pag-aalaga and give us advice. Ganyan. So, build a good support system. Yes, and of course, you have to get your family into sports. Um, you expose your kids at an early age. Um, and But don't force them to do what mm-hmm. they don't want to do. And syempre, at a young age, magkakaroon din sila ng good health. Ma- mm-hmm. Ma-adapt nila yan hanggang paglaki nila. So, yes. it's a good thing that they will have a healthy lifestyle yes. hanggang paglaki nila. And of course, the values that you learn from sports na naranasan namin is one of them is um, some of them are discipline, determination, hardworking, responsibility, resp- being responsible sa sport namin, being obedient dahil sunod lang kami talaga sa mga coaches namin and marami, maraming values na matututunan sa sports and um, you just do just let remind your children ako lagi kong ano kasi moto ko din to and do all things well so kahit na um, hindi ka magaling dito pero ginawa mo yung best mo yung as a parent or as an athlete that's ano already yung feeling na ginawa mo yung best mo is the yes. best feeling already and you know na mag- ginawa mo yung best mo in 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 a certain thing or yun. yes and yun nga rin uh, very important na Uh, as parents, we need to be a good role model for our kids. So, pag nakikita tayo ng kids natin that we're doing sports or mga sports activities, maenggan din sila to, to you know, uh, try sports then na nakikita sa parents na, nila na, oh, my parents are enjoying sports. Ako rin, siguro may enjoy ko rin yan. ba? Diba? So, gagayahin tayo ng mga kids natin. Tayo yung yung tinitingnan nila. So, sa mga hindi naman masyadong active, di ba, okay pa rin, uh, start to be active. <laughs> di ba? Uh, hindi naman kailangan yung hardcore workout, di ba? May, meron naman mga 15-minute workout lang, di ba? So, slowly lang, step by step. Di ba? So, yun yung importante. Uh, magandang bonding talaga yung sports. And maybe later on, mapass on din nila with their families. Yes. So, magiging tradition na ng family yung mm. sports. And there you have it. Allow me to recap into three tips what the Lazardos have shared on how to raise a champion. First is, be intentional in the approach. When raising your kids, it helps to remember Different age, different approach. And remember the importance of modeling. Number two, have a good support system. As they say, it takes a village to raise a child. And number three, get your family into sports. There's so much you can get from getting your family into sports, the quality time, the character building, and having an active lifestyle. Now, it's time for our next segment that we call Crunch Time. So, all right, Janice, uh, Denise, and Japoy, we're going to throw you some questions and you're going to have to answer them as fast as you can, all right? As fast as you can. And there's no need to explain unless unless we can't help but ask. All right? So, are you guys ready? Pwede ba ako kumuha muna ng armor and headgear? Ready? All right. So, okay, so okay. okay. First question. Who is most likely to skip training? Who? Japoy. <laughs> Next, who's most likely to win a taekwondo competition right now? Japoy. Next, <laughs> who is most likely to get injured now? Me, you, or you? Japoy or me? Japoy. <laughs> me. Both. <laughs> Both. 
Who is most likely to be a brand ambassador? Japanese. Janice. Yes. <laughs> Both. Who is most likely to get jealous over something silly? Me. Janice. <laughs> okay, this one's a good one. Who's most likely to forget an anniversary? Japoy. Patay, patay Next, who is most likely to prepare a romantic date? Japoy. Okay, who's most likely to win every argument? Me. Janice. Janice. Me. Janice. Janice. <laughs> block, block. Who is most likely to miss their partner? Japoy. Japoy. And Janice. And Janice. Uh, <laughs> who is most likely to yell at their partner? Janice. <laughs> <laughs> who is most likely to say I love you first? Japoy. Japoy ba? Mm-hmm. And Janice. Humble. And Janice. Humble eh. <laughs> who is most likely to be the stage parent? Janice. Japoy. <laughs> Japoy. Pareho. <laughs> May Japoy. <laughs> Who is most likely to be the parent coach? Japoy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Who is most likely to make up cute nicknames for the kids? Japoy. <laughs> Japoy. Japoy. <laughs> Who is most likely to spoil the kids? Janice. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Shang ane streak. Who is most likely to discipline the kids? Japoy. Discipline Japoy. Japoy. Okay. <laughs> and, and the last one. What is the family motto? Be happy. <laughs> Always be happy then to, and together forever. Hindi kami pwede maghiwalay. Super cute. Super cute. So, <laughs> All right, crunch time is done. And of course, thank you so much, Janice and Japoy, for sharing your experience and time with us and for being super game to answer our questions today. It's super unique also to, to have a, a couple here with us today and, and, and answering these questions. It's really fun. And of course, now we've come to the end of the episode for our final messages. So Doc Shobes, Relly, and Robbie, let's share with our teammates what we have in store for them in our next episodes. Right, so thank you to Japoy and Janice. Really, I learned a lot from um, you. Sabi ko nga, baka mula na ang trabaho, no? Just by hearing from you. And, you know, like, uh, oh, I just want to really stress, no? Like, you know, uh, as, a, uh, as a parent myself, we really have to integrate each um, aspect of the, our child's development. So we won't just concentrate on the physical aspect. We won't just, like, Uh, concentrate on the social emotional aspect you know so best is to really um to make a well-rounded child is to more or less uh focus on each of those aspects so um on my end i'd like to promote this uh upcoming um webinar that we will be having come june 19th so if you want to know more about your child's development especially now we are in the uh pandemic no so we want to know how growing is like now in the pandemic season so hopefully you can join us it will be a one day event and we have um you know a lot of experts now in the field so hopefully you can join us in that thanks doc so there you have it folks uh on behalf of the gold diggers i would like to thank you and of course the lizardos uh for joining us tonight um please do share your thoughts with us on our facebook page and tag the Gold Diggers PH. Or you can post or comment on our video uploads on Facebook and YouTube. We'd really love to hear from you guys. Again, our FB page is the Gold Diggers PH. If you haven't liked or followed us, we hope you can click that button and continue to dig with us. Tune in next week and catch our second episode uh, on Raising a Champion as we feature former Blue Eagles Kirk Long and Tata Garcia Long. So got any questions for Kirk and Tata, hit us up on our Facebook page. See you guys. Robbie, take us home. Thanks, Relly. So that was a lot of fun, Japoy and Janice. So cool lang talaga ang oras when it comes to topics we're very passionate about, most especially sports and parenting. So, you know, your, your, your sports-filled life journey and parenting journey so far is one to really admire. 
And we thank you so much for the time, the wisdom, and the experience that you've shared with us and for the rest of our listeners. So thanks to you, there's a lot we can learn from in sports, especially in racing a champion. So maraming maraming salamat. So teammates, we're happy to share with you that we've get, we're getting really good responses so far with our inaugural Sports Events Essentials episodes that we've posted on our social media pages so far. So as mentioned, this is only a part of our ambitious mission to help uplift and progress Philippine sports by providing training and support through the Gold Diggers as podcasts and coming soon, our learning series. So please check out our Facebook page for more details on our Sports Events Essentials virtual learning sessions and see how you can participate in that program. So lastly, let's once again continue the fundraising with our advocacy pitch and PH. Please continue helping out our fellow Filipinos who are in most need. Follow our Facebook page for more details on how you too can learn how to pitch in for PH. Now finally, over to the couple of the hour, Janice and Japoy Lizardo, your final message for the episode, please. Um, yes, thank you so much again for inviting us. And we, it's such an honor to be part of this show. And it was nice meeting you all. And of course, to the viewers, I hope you learned a lot of things from us. And um, I hope that you'll be active now if you're not. <laughs> and of course, just follow us on our social media accounts, um, Instagram, Twitter, at Jan underscore Lizardo, and my Facebook, Janice Lagman Lizardo. And our YouTube family channel is the Lizardo Squad. So you just have fun watching us and our kids in that YouTube channel. Yes. Um, thank you so much, Gold Diggers. Thank you, thank you. And of course, to Milo, na, um, ever since, since day one, na part ng aming champion journey, thank you very much. And of course, to all the parents, I hope you've learned uh, something from us. Um, kami, marami rin kami natutunan dito sa ating uh, pag-uusap. And we thank you then for, for the support na binibigyan niyo sa amin. And of course, don't forget to check out our um, Taekwondo Club uh, Instagram account at JNJ Taekwondo. Tama? Japoy and Janice TKD. And then Facebook page is Japoy and Janice Taekwondo. And then also may social media accounts, um, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and then ano pa ba? Yun lang. Yun lang. At Japoy underscore Lizardo. Yan. So thank you, thank you so much. And of course, to all the parents out there, um, if you want to start to be active, lalo na yung mga kids ninyo, um, just go on to the YouTube channel and search nyo yung Milo Champion Habit para at least uh, magawa ng kids ninyo yung mga um, yung instructional video dun sa uh, Milo Champion Habit. So magandang start yon for your kids and for the parents also na gustong guma, uh, gumawa nung uh, Milo Champion Habit. So thank you again. And that ends our session for today. We hope you enjoyed this episode with Denise and Japo Lazardo and on how to raise a champion. And thank you, of course, to our partner, Milo, for making this possible. Catch you on the next episode of The Gold Diggers. And remember to dream, dig in, and win. Take care and see you.